Hey guys, welcome back to Upside Down Data. This is an update about the current state of the UDPI risk indicator for Bitcoin and for the crypto market as a whole after this weekend's crash down to 42K. So if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, follow us on Twitter at Upside Down Data. We put out regular updates there about our risk indicators and more. So the reason that I wanted to make this video is because in addition to the fact that we've seen this volatility over the weekend, took a lot of people by surprise, pretty substantial drawdown of about 39% from the all-time high at around 69K. But in addition to that, I wanted to clarify what the UDPI is thinking right now and tell you a little bit about how it's reacting to this move and what we might expect it to show in the coming weeks. Now, what we're looking at here is the output of the upside downside potential indicator, which is our risk indicator. And on the vertical axis, you see that we have lines up to five that indicates highest risk. So those points where we get up to five indicates that that was as high risk as the asset has ever been and the opposite to the downside. So negative five means very low risk. And when price reached there, that was about as low risk or that was as low risk as the asset has ever been. And so we're looking at these fluctuations and where we're sitting right now is at positive 0.5. And what I think some people are wondering looking at this is why hasn't there been a more dramatic reaction on the UDPI? There was pretty dramatic price action, a significant drawdown, but we're not seeing the UDPI reacting, reacting in a similarly impulsive way, just yet at least. And I wanna clarify what it's doing and how you can interpret it right now. The reason that the UDPI is not dropping more precipitously, at least in the immediate term, is because since the price drop happened so fast, the UDPI isn't convinced yet that the downside potential has been exhausted. The way that it's designed is to be a patient model and, and not an impulsive model. It's careful and it waits and sees and makes more confident decisions that way. It cares a lot more about multi-day and especially multi-week trends than it does about intraday or even intra-week movements. And this movement, as volatile as it's been, is still in that short-term territory. And the model isn't convinced that the price action has made up its mind. So right now it's waiting and, and watching to see what Bitcoin does next. And so I wanna give you a sense of what to expect. What are some possibilities here that would send the UDPI in different directions? Well, let's just say that there are three general scenarios that could play out. And I'm gonna reiterate here a little bit of what Mark talked about in his video yesterday, because it's just such an important point and I wanna help folks map on price action to what we can expect to see from the UDPI so that we can use it as you know the price takes on more decisive direction uh, in the coming period of time. So let's just say there are those there are three general scenarios that could play out. You know, one is that price bounces back up in a V-shaped recovery, more or less. Another possibility, obviously, is that we have a ways down to go and that price dumps much further. And then the third possibility, obviously, is that price consolidates around current levels, and maybe it would drift slowly lower into the mid to low 40K area. Maybe revisit that low on the wick from the other day, maybe, something like that. So let's just say that those are three kind of general scenarios that could happen. So what would the UDPI think about that? How would it react? Um, well, if price bounces upwards pretty quickly, what's gonna happen is that you know, the UDPI risk is going to start to reverse and, and continue upwards. And what that would mean, the way to interpret that, is that if price continues upwards, the UDPI's opinion would be that this correction was too quick and too impulsive to reset risk very much. And so from the UDPI's perspective, a longer correction would be more convincing as a baseline or a foundation for a low risk trend reversal to the upside. A V-shaped recovery would be nice, of course. I think that it's hard to root against that if you're invested in this market, but it would also bring us back toward higher risk regions before the risk has a chance to reset very much. And the consequence of that in the long term could be to put a cap on the upside potential that could be realized on the next leg. So in a sense, a V-shaped recovery would be you know, good in the short term, 
and less good or, or not ideal, at least not the best scenario that could possibly play out for the longer term. That's one possibility. Another possibility is pretty straightforward, right? If price goes down much farther, well, obviously UDPI risk is going to decrease and it'll decrease pretty substantially, although it'll also do it um, gradually, meaning that, you know, an immediate dump within a few hours isn't all on its own going to immediately reset the UDPI risk. But if we go down much farther, of course, risk will come down quite a bit too. So that one is probably the most straightforward option, um, you know, possibility in terms of interpreting uh, what the UDPI is saying. Another thing that could happen, and this one is in some ways like the most interesting possibility, I think, and also quite um, a plausible one, is that if, you know, pr if it's price consolidating, um, you know, around these regions. So as I make this video, Bitcoin is in the 49 plus K region between 49 and 50 K, you know, maybe price hangs out in that region, maybe between 40 and 50 K, maybe it comes down into the lower 40 Ks, something like that. We can call that consolidation. That would in some ways be ideal. And the reason that I say that is because the UDPI does not need to see substantial further downside for risks to come down by a pretty good amount over the next few weeks. So I said that if price did dump farther, risk would obviously come down a lot more. But risk can come down a lot more without price dumping much farther. And you know, if price consolidates, what's going to happen essentially is that the UDPI is going to become increasingly convinced that this pullback to 42K and into the 40Ks is convincing, is, is uh, you know, a demonstration that the market has cooled off. It's going to become more persuaded that the market has cooled off and it will kind of agree to that and, and risk will decrease pretty quickly. So, you know, when we see sideways action, often risk also goes sideways. But we're now in a situation where if we see sideways action, risk will actually start to decrease quite a bit. So, um, you know, to try to drive home the scenario that I'm talking about here, which is, you know, just a guess, it doesn't have to happen, but it could happen. And this is how we could think about it if it did happen. Let me pull up the price chart here, just so that we can look at, you know, what, uh, what that might look like on the chart. And to oversimplify a little bit, you know, we can look back at the May to July consolidation period as a model for what might happen here. You know, at the time, a lot of people were talking about this as a Wyckoff reaccumulation zone. And so you get a lot of like choppy action. Eventually you get this kind of impulsive move to the downside, which gets bought up really quickly with this really long wick right in the middle of this consolidation period. And then this bounce that's called a spring in Wyckoff terminology. Um, you know, and that confirmed for a lot of people that that reaccumulation was was what was going on there. You know, price continued to go sideways for a bit, uh, and eventually it concluded that period at about three months and then bounced to the upside, and, you know, here we are. So if, what if something similar like that were to play out? Well, we could be in for a period of consolidation that could last weeks or even months, but, you know, maybe we would just see this kind of sideways action, possibly some downwards drift, and that spring, maybe, which would then take us into a new trend, which eventually would send us on our merry way back to the upside and toward new all-time highs. That's the kind of scenario that I'm talking about when I say that if we go more or less sideways, or at least don't have a major impulsive move to the downside, again, after this recent impulsive move to the downside, risk would start to come down. So the major point that I want to drive home there is that unless we have that V-shaped recovery, we're going to be expecting to see risk grind it down, whether that means it's because of another move down in the price or whether it's just because of a consolidation period that convinces the model that the market has cooled off and is ready to start building a foundation, a low risk base for the next leg up whenever that comes. So I'll just conclude by pulling up the UDPI chart across assets here. Uh, you know, this, um, we really want to keep our eye on Bitcoin here. So, um, you know, this is probably not the time to be just picking the lowest risk UDPI altcoin and, and aping into it. But this is to give you a sense of, you know, across the market, how is risk reacting? So, you know, Bitcoin, as I mentioned, is at 0.5 after being, um, you know, above one just a few days ago. 
So it's come down a bit, but obviously it still has downside potential remaining. It's in pretty neutral territory when we just look at the UDPI gauge. And then you can see that altcoins are all over the place. There are still some that are quite high risk. And what I would say about those in this scenario is that those are the ones that are especially prone to getting hammered. So if Bitcoin were to pull back substantially again, you know, AVAX, um, as strong as the ecosystem is, could really get punished by that. Definitely the same is true of Helium, HNT over there on the bottom left. Um, there are others that are, are much lower risk on their own terms, right? Um, you know, we, we want to interpret these in context, but we can still look at ADA and see that it's below minus two. We can look at DOT and see that it's minus 1.62. We can look at, you know, VeChain and see that it's minus 1.4. Phantom, minus 1.84. Again, given the bearish market conditions, uh, probably not the time to ape in. But maybe that means that those ones uh, have already realized a good amount of their downside potential. And even if Bitcoin pulls back, they might, might not be the ones that would get punished the most. Maybe they'd be some of the ones that would be good candidates to bounce back quickly. So, um, you know, this is more of a watch list under these conditions. That's something that we've said before. Um, and, and that's how I would think about this, at least. This is, you know, we, we look across all of these assets at a time like this to make sure that we are surveying the landscape, that we have a sense of, of what could happen and how these different assets could perform as market conditions change. But the main thing that we want to understand is what's Bitcoin doing? How is it affecting risk? And what's the trajectory? Where are we headed next? So that's some things to think about, something to watch. Um, as I mentioned, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Remember, with the UDPI, W-A-G-M-I.